An experienced police officer, while handling a case with his colleague, receives a call about a homeless person causing trouble at a subway station. He goes to investigate and unexpectedly offers the individual food, a shower and boots. He is unaware that his kind act will have a significant impact on the person's life. Looks like we'll have to halt discussing the case further, Steve, said Officer Jackson. Some beggar's been causing a nuisance at the subway. We need to head there. Let's check it out quickly then, suggested Officer Steve. We were gonna head there anyway. Remember, we need more reports. Yep, let's go. Officer Jackson finished before they walked out of the station and got into their patrol car. The two cops had expected they have to deal with an annoying man pestering the passersby for money. But when they arrived at the crime scene, they were taken aback by the panhandler's appearance. The man had tears in his eyes and was sitting on the subway stairs, looking disheveled and tired. Excuse me, sir, Officer Jackson told him. You can't lodge here, nor can you bother the people to give you money. You gotta leave this place, or you need to come to the station with us, Officer Steve added. So let's keep moving. Look, officers, the man sighed. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cause any trouble. Okay, I lost my cane, and I can't walk without it. I wanted a few cents so I could get myself something to eat. I really didn't bother anyone. Officer Jackson looked at the man and felt terrible for him. It was cold, and he didn't even have a proper jacket. Moreover, he looked pale and weak. Sir, do you need any medical attention? He finally asked the man, noticing he had no shoes and only a pair of old worn slippers. We could take you to the hospital. No, but can you get me some food? The poor man, Eugene, asked shyly. I wouldn't have bothered you, officers, but I'm famished. The two officers realized that the man was not causing a disturbance, but rather someone in need of their assistance. They made a commitment to provide him with food, a cane, and a ride home. They followed through on their promise, buying him a cane and getting him food. When they drove him to what they thought was his home, they discovered that he was homeless, living on the streets, and surviving on the small amounts of food he was able to find while dumpster diving. So you've been sleeping in an alley? asked Officer Jackson, looking at the alley where they'd pulled over. This place is all damp, sir. We don't think we can drop you off here. How about we leave you at a shelter? You guys are really kind, officers, Eugene said, moved by the officer's kindness. But you need not worry. Homeless folks like me often sleep in a damp area like this one. Also, if you've not done so already, please subscribe to our channel and click that notification bell to get inspired by these animal stories every day. Now, back to the story. Eugene shared his emotional tale with the officers detailing how he had lost everything. He explained that while working at a construction site for a skyscraper, he had sustained an injury that left him disabled in one leg, unable to walk. Due to his physical limitations, he was unable to continue working in manual labor and not having a formal education, unable to find work in an office. The story deeply moved Officer Jackson. I couldn't provide for my family, so my wife and children left me, he continued. I didn't see a point in living after they left, so I'm taking life as it comes. My wife's now remarried, and she's happy. I don't have any hopes or aspirations of changing my fate, officers. Officer Jackson was determined to help Eugene turn his life around. He was particularly motivated by his own personal connection to Eugene's situation as his grandfather had also worked as a construction worker on skyscrapers and had raised him after the loss of his parents at a young age. So, instead of allowing Eugene to sleep in an alley, Officer Jackson drove him to the police station, provided him with a warm meal, helped him take a shower, and gave him warm boots. You're still young, Eugene, he said. You can't lose hope so soon. You gotta live for yourself if nobody else. After his shift, Officer Jackson drove Eugene to a shelter for the homeless and gave him some money. Hey, cop, you really don't need to do this, Eugene said. You've done enough for me. Well, you're like a younger brother I never had, Eugene, Officer Jackson said. Keep this with you and take care. After parting ways that day, Eugene had never expected to cross paths with Officer Jackson or his partner, Officer Steve. But three months later, he saw a cop's car pull over outside the shelter, and Officer Jackson got down. Officer? Eugene was shocked. Didn't expect to see you around here again. Is it for a case? Something's wrong at the shelter? Nope, 
Nothing's wrong, Eugene, Officer Jackson said. I just had to give you something. Officer Jackson gave Eugene an envelope containing $12,000 inside. Officer Stephen Jackson had started a fundraiser for Eugene and managed to raise that amount in three months. You can slowly start a new life with this money, friend, Officer Jackson said encouragingly. Get yourself some help, find a job. These days disability is not really something that can hinder you from finding work. And yes, get yourself a nice place once you are on your feet. Eugene had tears in his eyes. You're a very kind man, officer, he said. How will I return your favor? You don't need to, Officer Jackson said. Just do your best at the second chance life has given you. Take care. After a few months, Eugene's life had undergone a transformation. Not only had he found employment and was moving towards stability, but he was also seeking therapy to heal from the trauma of his past experiences. This positive change was all thanks to the kindness and compassion shown to him by two police officers.